I was really excited to be involved in theater, you know, and finally to perform in front of an audience. But then it's all worth it in the end. We get to go up on stage so everyone can see us, you know, and everybody can have a good time. They can see this great kabuki play. <laughs> it's been a good experience all around. Skeroku is, in my opinion, the funniest comedy that was ever written for the Kabuki theater in its um, 300 years of existence. So I like comedy, and I think it's a, a splendid kind of play for young actors to, uh, to play in. It's great fun for the actors because it's a comedy. And I think audiences will also respond in spite of the fact that it's a foreign kind of art form. their own makeup. This is the back end of the brush that I use to sort of smooth the eyebrows over and make them as flat as possible. There's a whole page where Danjiro the Twelve uh, is applying his makeup for Skeroko, so it was a real big help to me seeing what he did step by step. So I think you first dip this in water. And apply it. Oops, oops, that's not right. Got some of my eyelashes, and that's going to show up, so I have to get that off later. Oh, yeah. The middle. No, it's like the scalp. The, the audience will see probably the middle part. This is the Hachimaki purple band. Only royalty are supposed to wear purple, so when I come in, people are insulted because I'm wearing purple and I appear as a commoner. Pure white face makeup is usually used for the, the good main characters, and darker makeup is used either for older people or lower cast characters. So in this particular play, Skeroku, um, Mombe, the most evil character, has the darkest face makeup. The courtesans, they have pink face makeup. Agamaki and Shirotama, the lead courtesans, have the whitest face makeup. Then in terms of the, the male characters, Skeroku would be the, the whitest face, and Ikyu, who is also the arch rival or, the, or, or an evil character, um, he is a higher ranking evil character, therefore he isn't as dark as Mombe. In, in Kumadori makeup, it's considered that as the actor starts to put on the Oshiroi and then the red, that he starts to take on the persona or the anger of that character as he applies it. We were bringing, renting from Japan uh, 37 costumes, and we were renting from Japan nearly 40 wigs, and we were renting from Japan a number of properties. Kabukis are traditional, and as traditional shows, they have traditional costumes. Agemaki, it takes up to 45 minutes to get her fully dressed. 
mainly because you have to sew multiple layers together as well as tying them on and balancing them and pulling up this and sticking in the OB and it's, it's very complex. The courtesans are on high geta, so that if their feet are about, could be up a foot off the ground on these big high shoes. And with the costumes, they can't see their feet. And with the wig, they can't move their heads. So they have to have an assistant to lean on to move around on stage. I think we, we weighed myself with the wig and the shoes and the, the costume. It comes out to be about 50 pounds. I wear one, two, three, like six or seven layers, and I just can't, I can't do any of it myself. The, uh, at different times, I'll have five or six people wrestling with me to get me dressed. I have to completely take off almost everything that I'm wearing in terms of the costume and put on the white fighting kimono that I wear. It takes about two minutes and 40 seconds, I think we have it down till. And there's about four people helping me get out and get into the costume. I have to take off the wig that I had for most of the production, put on this long haired wig that's kind of cool to wear. I like wearing it. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, not for everyone, but it's, it's just a neat part of the production that no one gets to see is the quick change. We use the same music that might be heard in a production. Um, the dance movements, the choreography is essentially what you would see in Japan. Now the main difference, of course, is it's in English. Now we do try to maintain uh, as much of the um, vocal patterning that the kabuki actors have developed over the years within our English. Here he is! Where? Here! Ikyo! Keroku! The, the fighting style is called tachimawari, and it's, it's stylized. It's closer to a dance, I would say. The movements all have a certain uh, grace to them which in a sword fight you might not have. Yeah. I'm having a great time. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I'm the bad. I'm the bad guy. That's which is you know pe people um, never. I don't know you think of Star Wars. You, a lot of people think of Darth Vader, so that's cool. Scarecrow seem could could potentially seem like the the bad guy, but he's sort of a Bugs Bunny. He's mischievous. But EQ did kill his father. Um, and Skeroku is doing the things that he's doing to find his father's murderer, although um, it's taken him 18 years to figure out how to do this, and this is, you know, not the best plan I've ever heard of, you know, going around insulting people. <coughs> hey, someone, I don't stop me! I'll throw you in a ditch! I'll ram a house! Both of your nose! Hear me! I don't, I don't come in and cause as many problems, let's say, as Skeroku does. He's coming in, sticking the pipe in his toe and putting the um, knocking uh, noodles on people's head and all that sort of stuff. Um, whereas my character has to sit back and listen to people insult him, um, be, be, sh have pipe shoved in his face by some other people's feet, um, have the, the sandal put on his head. So there's nothing I can do except I can't, I can't be jumping up and saying, what are you doing? Because that's not what the form is. So I'm supposed to sit there. And um, just to keep my thoughts active, I respond to everything that I'm hearing on stage with facial expressions because that's the only, I can't, my hands are hidden. trying to show people what Japanese theater is, you know, and we're trying to replicate as closely as possible to what they do in Japan. I mean, that's why we bow before the musicians, that's why we bow before the percussion, the ske, the stage manager. We show respect to the people in the traditional way. You can't just do a play from a different culture. You know, you, you need to get into that culture as much as you can, um, find out about what it's about because there's so much of the culture that's revealed in the play itself. That, that's why it's been so great to have Matagoro Sensei here from Japan and Kikunobu Sensei here and, and, and the, the Shamisen players, you know, all these Japanese folks that have grown up playing Shamisen or singing or doing dance. They make it a great cultural exchange almost. It's the real power of this department on a certain level. 
um, that uh, they can bring in the people that they can bring in, that they, can ha they have the, the talent around them to teach people, to train people more so than you might get in a, di in a different um, environment. I think that's really unique and special, and I'm all for it. I think the kabuki performances in English do play a rather unique role in Hawaiian uh, culture because of the large Japanese descent population, because Japanese culture is important uh, in Hawaii. Kabuki, which is one of the most popular and interesting of the theater forms from Japan, truly finds a unique audience in Hawaii so that we like to feel that the plays truly reach a very large audience. I think close to 10,000 people will be seeing Skeroku here in Kennedy Theater. Members. <laughs> 